Welcome to the tribe where we check out a lot of controversial videos, but I like to have y'all with me because I like to think that we're building a little group of, you know, logical thinkers that are going to try to look at things without just crazily picking a side or being very emotional and so on and so forth. So we have a video today that is called Everything Wrong with Woke Culture and the Impact on Feminism. Curious. It's a long one, though, but let's dive in. Quite a surge in the representation of women across all media, like movies and TV shows, including women at the helm of decades old franchises, even taking over roles that are traditionally held by men. And honestly, fans have loved it. While it is a big change for everyone, everyone has respected the change and shown up in droves to support these new female heroes. No, I'm just kidding. Everyone hates it, and everyone is really <laughs> damn pissed about it. And the reviews and box office numbers are just as bad as people say, no matter how much Rotten Tomatoes tries to convince us otherwise. But why? Well, it's probably because everybody hates women. Nope, that's not why. It turns out 50% of the population is female, and you know what? They're not going to see these movies or supporting these TV shows either. Is it because women hate women? No, it's because these movies and TV shows are, spoiler alert, really bad. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the problem with the modern and very woke representation of women. Now, speaking as a woman of brownish color, I have to say that I don't really see myself connecting with the new Batwoman, Rey Skywalker, the new female doctor, the new Mulan, Captain Marvel, the Charlie's Angels, Harley Quinn, and especially not Commander Holdo, or as I like to call her, purple hair lady from Star Wars. I just don't like any of these characters. So stick to your post and follow my orders. Oh God, especially not Commander Holdo. No, no, when I think of incredible badass women, I think of Black Widow or Rita Vertasky from Edge of Tomorrow and Zoe from Firefly. I think of Eowyn taking down the Witch King of Agmar in Lord of the Rings and Wonder Woman walking into no man's land. This scene just gives me goosebumps. The reason I absolutely love these characters is because their ability is apparent, but oh so understated. Their gender is never brought up as a justification, excuse, or any sort of complaint. They're fully aware of their strengths and weaknesses and use other people's perceptions of their gender to their advantage. Like when Natasha Romanoff lets Russian gangsters think that they have her overpowered, when really she can easily break out whenever she wants. I like that these women fight for higher callings than themselves. They fight for peace or for justice. The ultimate goal isn't their own glory, but the triumph of good over evil. I'm a soldier. I volunteered. I'm not walking away. And I have to say that my absolute favorite thing about them is that they don't hate men. They don't feel threatened <laughs> or put upon by the men around them. Instead, they form bonds with them and work with them shoulder to shoulder as equals. There are some situations where they want to put the woman at the helm and it's like they've got to denounce men as well as be up there. However, I do want to say just because she doesn't relate with some of the other characters she mentioned previously, and she's more so focusing on Wonder Woman and so on, it doesn't mean that there's not other women that do relate with those characters and do enjoy those characters as well. And their own power is not diminished in comparison. They're not here to destroy the patriarchy. They're here to do what's right. Now, the creators of these new female characters would probably say the same thing, that these characters are here to do the right thing and give young girls everywhere positive representations to look up to. But how have they done that? Well, let's look at the first mistake that woke feminism is making, and that is taking over existing male franchises. A few years ago, it was announced that Doctor Who, a BBC program that has been a staple of British programming for the better part of the last six decades, would for the first time feature a female doctor. Okay, real quick, I want to talk. So I've never watched Doctor Who. I considered it. But the thing is, I don't like how they keep changing the main character regardless. Like, I don't know. What, I, I, I'm sure it's fine and I'm not, I'm not hating on the show. I, I might even love it if I really give it a shot. But anytime I've ever had characters just suddenly get changed or even if it's a part of the storyline it's just tough for me because i may not like the dynamic of that next person and how they play the role and how they so uh, it, it, it's it's tough for me so i don't know that that is the greatest example but i would say that i i do agree with what she's trying to say where they're trying to take predominantly male dominated movies or 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 whatever like like and trying to put females at the helm no different than they're trying to do where they're putting minorities at the helm in place of the white characters that already played it. 
that's my way of saying I don't like this. I don't agree with it. I just it's like if you want to make new characters and new storylines and new whatever amongst the Marvel universe and stuff like that and they become black, that's cool. But I just don't feel like Little Mermaid that I grew up with should suddenly be a minority just because. Like just to me, it, I, and I, and I don't, they, they, I'm not speaking for all black people or all people of color or all people of, you know, I can't. I can only speak for myself and how I feel. But to me, that feels like a pity give. Like, oh, well, we're going to take this popular franchise and we'll make the character, you know, a minority. Yeah, there, that's for you. And also, I feel like that's the easiest way about it. How about let's make a new dope franchise that will stick and this younger generation can attach to, like, my generation may have attached to Little Mermaid or some other little Disney movies and stuff, and those will have some black characters. Why do we need to go back and change? And, and part of it could just be that we're not creative anymore, which is kind of a real thing. A lot of the movies and stuff you see nowadays are just renditions of stuff that's already came out and already happened. But I, I just, I, I very much am with them. I disagree with that. I don't, I don't like changing something for, for what it is. Like, I don't want a black Superman. I don't want a black Batman. I don't want to black. I don't. I want them to be what they've been and what they are. Now, if you want to create new people, like Luke Cage is dope, and I'm not saying he's new, but like I, I'm, I'm okay with that. If you want to make a character that, like, I'm okay with that. Let's make some new storylines. Let's make some new things, and and that can work. I don't know. It just seems weird to me that it's this mentality of like let's change what's already there. Ah, again, it just feels like. The easier route, and it feels like, oh, we, we pity, so we're going to make you that, you know, instead of doing the extra steps of creating an actual franchise around a black person. We're just going to, oh, well, we'll hand you this one that we've already created and built up. I don't know. It just seems weird to me. Now, to say that all the fans were against this would be just as inaccurate as saying that everyone was for it. People were intrigued about this new direction, but were worried that their favorite show would get the same treatment that Star Wars and Ghostbusters had gotten before it. Search male, replace with female, with a lethal dose of identity politics. You see, in recent years, the introduction of female-led media has not been simply a nod to female empowerment and the opportunity to take stories into new and interesting directions. No, it's usually accompanied with some pretty heavy-handed reinforcement of about time, and this is what we all need. And while it can sound empowering, it comes off as very self-congratulatory and self-aggrandizing and completely distracts from why people tune in every week. Okay, so it makes sense why she maybe targeted some of those earlier franchises she said she didn't relate with, because maybe this is how they're going about it, where it's like, oh, finally the woman, oh, it's about to, yeah, that is kind of weird to do that. The story and the characters. Boring. And this is the second mistake that woke feminism is making. It feels entitled to its success. Remember when Charlie's Angels was set to release a few years ago and people were doubting whether it would be a good movie? And here's what the director, Elizabeth Banks, had to say about it. My real plea is for men to have enough empathy to go see movies starring women because I've been asked to go see movies starring men my entire life and happily have done so. But, so wait, 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 but that's to say that you went and just watched movies that men were in because you were asked to do it. You didn't enjoy any of them. You weren't intrigued by any of the storylines or any of the plots. Nothing brought you in to want to watch it. You were just asked to do it. I, that's a weird way to put it. Like, I feel like you should have the empathy to go. Well, no, like just make a movie that interests me. I care less who's in the in the lead role. If the movie's not going to interest me, it's not going to interest me. Like, and I don't know why men don't return that favor. Now, female creators or male creators of female empowering shows might feel they're justified in their sense of entitlement of success, support, and loyalty from fan bases. But that doesn't mean that people are going to give it to them. In fact, entitlement is often universally met with scorn and mockery. But of course, they don't think that they're being entitled. They think that they're asking for what they're due. Oh wait, that is the definition of entitlement. But the energy they're spending on demanding success is the energy they're not spending where they need to. And this is the next mistake that woke feminism is making. The characters, these examples for young girls everywhere. Well, they're not that great. I need you to fix his suit. The suit is literal perfection. It will be when it fits a woman. Imagine the hubris of taking the work of someone else 
Bruce Wayne in this situation, someone who battle-tested and designed something for themselves, imagine strolling in and demanding that the suit be fixed to fit you, and that it is only perfect once it fits a woman who did nothing to earn it except be a woman. I'm sorry, am I supposed to connect with this behavior? Am I supposed to look at this and applaud this as a win <laughs> and apply it into my, my own life? Am I supposed to barge into someone's office while they're out to lunch and demand that they swap out the name on the door? How about this scene from Doctor Who, where an MI6 official assumes the doctor is a man? A fair assumption since the doctor has been a man for many decades. Does the female doctor handle it with grace, with maturity, and earn the respect of her audience as well as everyone around her? I've had an upgrade. Hi. Really? Really? Did ah, you- They do like to throw these shots like, oh, I've had an upgrade. I'm better now. Da, da, da. And it's like, ah, that is kind of goofy. It's, it's just as goofy as the whole, oh, I've watched male movies, so men should come out and watch the women's movies. That's like me saying I'm watching a YouTube video right now that was made by a female, but most of my viewers are like 80% male, 20% female, if not less, maybe 10% female. So I'm, I feel like women should come out and watch my YouTube channel more because I'm watching female YouTube channels. That doesn't make any sense. If my content is for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's not. Like, it's just, I don't know. This goes across the board. When you think of, like, say, the WNBA, right? The WNBA does not make a profit. I don't think it ever has, ever in the history of its existence. The NBA pays for it. They keep it afloat. And then the people are, oh, well, why doesn't the women get paid as much as the men? Da, da, da. Like, she said, 55% of the population is women. So why are women not watching the WNBA? You guys could be putting just as much money, time, all of that stuff right into the sport, and it could be doing better than the NBA. But they don't because they're just not interest. It's just not of an interest, right? So like, sometimes in life, there's just things you're into and you're not, and that's just kind of the way it is, and that's it's okay. Like that's okay. But don't paint that as like, oh, well, it's not fair for women. Men are, you know, men go in droves to sports games, to basketball games, to football games. That's why these people are making insane amounts of money, money that I, I think is too much, in my opinion, as well. But that amount of people are going hard for them, right? So it's like if women were going just as hard for women and their respective things that they enjoyed or whatever, like then it would be the same way, right? It would, it would be the same way. I'm sure that they're like, it's tough. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough. I I'm trying to think of an example in the other direction. I was gonna use makeup, but makeup I don't feel like works because makeup is literally mainly for women. Obviously, men do use it, but mainly for women. So if a man comes out with makeup and it's good, it's gonna sell. It's not like you have to convince them to come and buy it just because you're a man. Whereas basketball, I'm not saying it's a man's sport or it's for men, but I would say viewer wise, you would assume that it's more based on something men like than and women like yeah i don't know it's really interesting it's just i don't know i just don't like all that where we paint things in a certain way without looking at the actual entirety of it really need to put down every man that has come before you why do they need to kneel down for you to stand up and that's the problem with these characters there is such a bitterness in them they're not working for something bigger than them they're driven by vengeance and anger i'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work Okay, but, but but you just took credit for Batman's work, that, so that's okay. This antagonistic behavior assumes Goodness. that we just hand over success to men simply for being men. By that logic, no male-led movie ever does badly, and no male character is ever criticized or disliked. That would mean that Solo, a movie about a well-known, beloved male character, should have done well, but it didn't. I can't believe I need to say this, but success needs to be earned. But woke feminism thinks Thinks that if you don't like these characters, then you are a sexist. This is the next mistake of woke feminism. There is no such thing as legitimate criticism. No, any criticism of these totally incredible characters must be born out of bitter jealousy and a deep desire to keep women down. That if you dislike a female character, it's because she possesses power and we are more comfortable with seeing women in subservient positions. Even we women who criticize them don't apparently realize the years of brainwashing we've undergone that has told us that the woman's place is one step behind the man, if not in the kitchen. 
on to the next mistake that woke feminism makes. It's unshakable belief that it is saving society. That men would be bigoted toxic fools if woke feminists weren't putting them in their place. And that women would be helpless, knitting by the fire and weeping into their handkerchiefs, wondering when the men would be home. That young women everywhere would have no role models without woke feminism. Born out of yet another flawed belief that you need to see exactly yourself on screen. Someone who has your skin color, your background in order to connect with them. But that's not how human beings work. And that's not how imagination works. Regardless, more female representation on screen is a good thing. And feminism has been doing a great job on that front for many decades now. That is until woke feminism came out of nowhere, punched traditional feminism in the gut, <laughs> and said it was here to save it. I like how they show the woman getting booted. <laughs> Came booted in the window. Stop it. Came out of nowhere, punched <laughs> traditional feminism in the gut, and said it was oh. here to save it. Remember when Captain Marvel came out and made a billion dollars at the box office and everyone was like congratulating Brie Larson and she was like, guys, women can be leads in movies just like men, jeez. I think what drives me crazy about this is that there is absolutely no acknowledgement of the past, as if Sarah Connor did not terminate the Terminator and Ripley did not destroy the alien, as if these women didn't decades ago dominate the box office as badass action heroes. Strong female characters have been speaking well for their gender far longer than the woke feminists would have you believe. And I will say as a kid watching Terminator, I thought she was badass. I looked up there. I loved this woman. Oh, I thought she was. Yeah, she was. She was dope. She was super, super dope. So, yeah, that's very true. I never I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't even think about that until they showed this and talked about it. And I'm like, you know what? As a kid, I did. I did look. I was like, yo, she is like tough. I, that's what I thought. But there's one clear difference between the two types of representations. These females coming onto the screen weren't perfect superheroes. No, they had shortcomings and they were up against insurmountable odds. And they fought back, they learned, they grew. And when they overcame the enemy, we saw ourselves in them and believed that we too could overcome everything that scares us. Well, what about the female characters of today? They're either completely perfect or other times they're rude, arrogant, and entitled. And tend to stay that way. You're a female Bruce Wayne. Awesome, hilarious, handsome. Most com So basically what he's trying to say is that, or she, my fault. What she is trying to say, oh boy, on, on this kind of video, you can't mistake your words like that or you're gonna get got. They drag me through the, the, the comments. Um, now I lost what I wanted to, oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh no, hold up, hold up. I had something I wanted to say. They're rude, arrogant, and entitled. Oh yes, I wanted to say that basically what they, they embody the goofy females of today that are pushing for these goofy things. That's, so some goofy people got in, in, in charge of movies is basically what happened. Okay, interesting. Paris, <laughs> handsome. Yo. Most commonly we oh, associate boy. these traits with brash men. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. I know guys with none of that worth 10 of you. If our main hero possesses these traits, then it's almost guaranteed that it will be their undoing. That is until they learn some much needed humility. The reason the Marvel franchise was so incredibly successful was because at the heart of it was the transformation of two men. Captain America started off as an idealistic, selfless servant to his country, but eventually learned the tiny amount of selfishness needed for him to actually live his life and be happy. Tony Stark went from a hedonistic, self-serving playboy constantly impressed by his own genius to a man who found meaning and paid the ultimate price to preserve it. People could connect with these heroes, see themselves in their struggles and believe that they too could rise from their errors and achieve greatness. But the modern female woke hero doesn't get this traditional hero's journey. Mulan is no longer a scared girl taking up arms for the first time in order to protect her elderly father, earning her place in the army and earning the respect of everyone around her. No, in the new version, Mulan has always had chi flowing through her, and she was always meant to be the greatest warrior of all time. Okay, see, I didn't know this. I didn't see the new. I watched the cartoon or whatever, the original Mulan in the last like four to five years, and I thought it was super like cool, like her progression and her, you know, like I thought that was cool. So in the new movie, they just get rid of that. She's just badass the whole time. 
Okay. What's holding her back like it takes is away society's it. expectation that a woman should not fight. Captain Marvel is the most powerful Avenger. So there's no competition for me because I'm the strongest, so it's just yeah. kind of like a... And what's holding yeah. her back? I guess her desire for her mentor's approval? I guess? And she overcomes that easily. Speak to me! You can beat me with that! Now, Ray, Ray is, well, perfect. Without a day of training, she can mind control guards and pick up a lightsaber and kick Kylo Ren's butt. She's amazing. She can save the day. What a queen. What a bunch of queens. Slaying all day, <laughs> doing epic backflips and shit. Like, who cares? Look, I want a woman to save the day. I like that just as much as I like the man saving the day. But is it too much to ask that it be earned? That the powers and abilities aren't just handed to these characters, but that they work at them? They hone their skills, suffer defeats that they learn from, and meditate on losses, and come back stronger than ever. And can these women suffer consequences when they behave in terrible ways? Like in The Last Jedi, when Commander Holdo does not share with her team what the plan is for saving the last vestiges of the rebellion. Instead, when a male subordinate asks her what the plan is, she immediately insults him. Before we can find a new base, so what's our plan? Our plan? Captain? Not Commander, right? Wasn't it Leia's last official act to demote you? She assumes that because he's a man, he is not entitled to communication. The Rebellion is this close to being extinguished. He's not here to have a pissing match with you. He wants to be useful. I just want to know what's going on. Of course you do. I understand. I've dealt with plenty of trigger-happy flyboys like you. You're impulsive dangerous and the last thing we need right now so stick to your post and follow my orders this now i don't know the context of this movie if some of this may, 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 may make sense you know obviously it works for the narrative that is being pushed by the video that we're watching right now but overall i would say that i still would agree it seems like a lot of the newer characters a little goofy Little goofy. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, why wouldn't you want the like I feel like a big part of a, a movie is the character building, the the going through some stuff to get there, not just just ultimately being, you know, and then there are movies where the person is ultimately strong and all that, right? But then they go through some mental they go there's always some kind of trial and error challenge, something to get to where you need to be. But the way that it's being presented, and again, I've not watched all these movies, so I'm going for face value based on what is being told to me in this video, is like a lot of them are just perfect just immediately it's just like we are it and we're an upgrade from you guys so yeah that's why we're here this is not good yeah. leadership this is childish behavior expecting that your team should follow you blindly and if they don't it's because of their toxic masculinity and you know what she dies a hero and everyone's like hooray we should always believe women even when they're being terrible leaders Okay, can Hollywood come up with a better villain than just society? That society doesn't believe in our female hero, so that's why she's not achieving greatness. I know it's supposed to represent the struggles of women today, but believing in yourself is just one of the aspects needed for success. You know why I loved the first Wonder Woman movie? Because despite Diana being literally a god killer, she isn't just an instant warrior. No, she works at it. She trains hard with incredible female warriors and takes falls and hard hits but learns and grows. So when we finally see her kick some German butt, we revel in it because she's worked through blood, sweat, and tears to get that good. But what about in the second movie? Well, they undo all that. They show a 10-year-old Diana easily besting women three times her age and ultimately losing because of a minor detail. So she's been magic the entire time? Why did she need to train as hard as she did in the first movie as a teenager and as an adult? The problem with these perfect princesses is that it's impossible to connect with them. That's not me. I'm not perfect. I'm not born with magic that makes me able to air kick spears at the enemy. Sorry. And if the lesson here is that every woman has innate abilities they are born with, that are being squashed because of society's restrictions, well, that's just a terrible lesson. Because we're telling women that we have nothing to learn. We're born with everything we're capable of being, and we should only trust and listen to women and men, they're just interested in sex and keeping you down. I guess my question here is, what are woke feminists after? Are they working for equality? If so, why does it seem like all their TV shows and movies are all about putting men down and propping women up as perfect? It's normal, am I? The only time I've been a man that last party. Dear Lord, how do you cope with all that ego? 
And if they are for equality, why or why are they pushing the worst lesson for women possible? That women don't need to be criticized. There is so much growth that happens when we are criticized. Yes, not all criticism we get in our lives is legitimate. Sometimes it's born from jealousy or fear, but criticism is necessary for growth, for change, for us to adapt, and for us to excel. Telling women that you don't need to grow, you don't need to change, the world owes you success, the world needs to accommodate you, that you can be arrogant, you can assume that every man in your life is a sexist bigot, and if they challenge you, well, it's because they want to keep you down. It's almost as if woke feminists don't want us to be the best versions of ourselves, but instead be the worst versions of men. Like all the bad things we accuse men of being. Arrogant, bigoted, or disagreeable. I think Brie Larson yeah. is a great example of this. She is the true embodiment of woke feminism. I did I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Uh, and then... Tom, Tom Cruise over here? No, I'll be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank you very much. Well, you know, I mean, he does his own as someone who is at the top of her career, Brie Larson doesn't take the opportunity to give credit to the unsung heroes of movie making like her stunt double, but instead needs to tell everyone just how awesome she is. Work at being the best person that I can be and using this platform. Hello, dark and smile. Is that like a personal attack or something? In closing, this Yo. is not feminism. This is toxic femininity. But what do I know? I'm probably the byproduct of years of brainwashing by the patriarchy. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. I did enjoy it. This was a good video. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, like, I, I guess I could get, like, people may not want to be compared to somebody in general at all. But if that's coming from, a, oh, I'm not Tom Cruise because he's a guy type of thing, I'm me. It just depends. Like, if, if, if she would have said the same thing if they were comparing her to another woman, then I... I, I, you know, that, that's where it depends because there's certain things where you see a clip and you don't know 100% where that mentality came from. So I'm not going to just just blindly judge. But overall, this is a very interesting video. Very interesting video. The, 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 this, the, I feel like things went really extreme in one direction for a little while now. And I do feel like now we're in 2023. I think things are starting to rebound a little bit, but I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I I, I, it's like the, mm, I don't know what that means. I don't think that it's going to rebound back to like the way things were because there were things that needed to be fixed for sure. There were things that needed to be addressed. It's just that it's like, let's just say like we needed to get here and we were here. And so people were like, well, let's go way over here. And so now we're coming back. And the question is, do we end up landing closer to the logical middle? Do we go even further now to the other side? And I'm not making this a right or left thing. I just, just sides type of, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't know. I don't know what happens. We, we, I guess we find out. Comment below what you guys think. I like seeing female lead roles. I'm not against it. I don't like the forcing of it. No different than I don't like the forcing of black lead roles. I just don't force it is the only way I could think of it. Like, don't take a franchise and turn it into something just because you're like, look, we're giving you something. I, I don't want to be given something. Create something. Create something new and new, its own things. And, and, and you know, it, it, I don't know. That's just the way I feel about it. We could definitely dive into this topic a lot more. We could definitely dive into this topic a lot more, but I'm curious what you guys think. Comment down below and we will see where we go from there. Another video is going to pop up right here. If you're new or otherwise, and you're still here, either way, you're a legend. I appreciate you, but please smash that like button, hit that subscribe. I'll catch you next video, homies.